And that wasn't a, he didn't, he didn't say he thrust a, a needle or a pin in him. It was a spear that went right in. It struck him through with the spear, and that's a death sentence. If anything else was, he was beaten at least 39 times with, a, with an embedded whip. We know that. And you say me, he's going to swoon and come alive again? No, because he also had this that he was bearing in himself a sense of our sins. He was dying as our lamb, as our magnificent sacrifice. Not excusing us, not excusing us, but enabling us. I'm glad Brother Didat quoted the rest of that verse in Ezekiel. Because I believe it. I believe it. And I believe this, if you don't live that way, you will never make it. He suggested that uh, Christians have no heaven for Muslims. So I, I'm going to be one of the Christians that's going to differ. I will tell you, the heaven is open for every man who will submit to God and walk in the light of God's truth that God reveals to him. If you repent of your sins and say, God, show me the way and lead me and mean it with all your heart, God will not fail you, nor will heaven not be closed to you. Did Jesus die? The Bible says he gave up the ghost. That means he gave up his spirit. Now, let's take a look. And I'm, how am I doing for time, brother? Good, good. I hope I'm not talking too fast. I sometimes, my wife slowed me down a little. She said, don't go at 100 miles an hour in your language, but we'll try and slow down. Listen, when he rose, there were several instances where he appeared to people, you know, and one of them was, as my brother Deet had so, so, so eloquently illustrated, Mary. Mary was a person that was forgiven of many sins. And sometimes one who has been touched by God in a great way loves God more than some of us who are indolent and careless. Is that not true? And so here she was. She didn't know where the master had been taken. She'd heard something about something happening. She'd heard some talk about him not being there, but it hadn't penetrated her mind of what had happened. The jailers, the, the, the men guarding the tomb had fled into town. The, the seals were broken, and their life was on the line, so they were paid by the religious leaders to give an excuse. But what was about her? What did he mean, touch me not? The original is, don't cling to me. She was already, you know, at his knees. She was already there. She said, oh Lord, I see you. She wasn't just standing back looking at him. She clung to him. He says, Mary, don't cling to me. Don't touch me this way. Touch me not. Because I'm going to... I haven't, I, I haven't, I'm not going to my father right away. And we know that he went to his father. By the way, being ascended to his father, I don't know whether he did that, where you got that about dying, but I haven't found it yet. God bless you though. If you can find it, that's good. But it, generally, when they died, they gave up the ghost, or they, they bowed their heads and died. But this ascending to his father, there was one illustration in the Old Testament. Let me tell you one illustration. Elijah, the prophet, was caught up to God. He ascended. Enoch, the godly man, he ascended. He was, was not. God took him without the gate of ordinary death. Our Lord Jesus said, I've not ascended. I'm not going to leave you right away. And for a number of days, for 40 days, in fact, he gave witness to each one. He went to a room where these disciples were gathered in fear of the religious leaders and he goes in and says to them Shalom, Salam, peace be to you, Pax Vobiscum and they, they were afraid they thought, is this a ghost? is this a spirit? and so he said touch me, look at me, hear me a ghost does not have this he does not have a body like this. It's not something invisible. I'm not some ghostly angel. 
He said, give me some food. Give me some food. Now, why, why, why take food if he was, you know, the food he took was proof of his resurrection, to my mind. Because when he took it and ate it, he was showing he had a resurrected body. Oh, someone says, no, he couldn't have eaten food because uh, uh, resurrected beings don't eat food. But the Bible tells us that angels eat food. When Abraham met the angels who told him the story of the wondrous thing that was going to happen in his life, the blessing that was coming to him, he served them food and the Bible says, the word of God says, they ate it. So if angels can eat food, I'm sure our risen Lord could. And that comforted his disciples. Then Paul says, 500 others saw him. And then, at the day of Pentecost, if they had a body, or if they had a corpse, or if they had a, a stiff of some sort, why didn't they produce him? Peter, the coward, the man who denied the Lord, he was recovered and he stood on the day of Pentecost and preached. And they heard him. Many were converted. One other thing. Paul, he was called Saul. That was his Hebrew name. He was on the way to Damascus to, to persecute and, if necessary, kill Christians. He hated them. But something happened to him on that road where he saw the light. He cried out to God, Who art thou, Lord? And then he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Because that voice said, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He had no reason to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead or that Jesus crucified because there's no advantage in it for him. He would be met off as he was. He had the position. Why, in fact, he paid for it with his life. Then we come down to one other thing. Brother Didat very kindly touched on the word anoint, and I, maybe I can touch on it again. Now, I, I'm, I don't mean to be, I, I do want to be unkind. Please don't misunderstand me. But I find it a little hard to uh, take the word anoint as rubbing a body when it comes to kings. Like uh, David was anointed king, I don't think they gave him a rub down, they just anointed him. And, um, and they used to anoint bodies. In fact, the undertaker still does some performances. And in some religious faiths, they still anoint the body with, with uh, perfumes in honor of the dead. And so this is what I see as Mary doing. What does all of this mean to us, though? It means that here we have open to us a grand opening of coming into a vital personal relationship with God. I don't care who we are. You say, well, I don't believe, I don't believe all of that. I'm going to ask you, just believe the one thing and say, I'm going to submit to God. I'm going to follow His ways. I'm going to turn from everything that is wrong. And don't tell me this is a Christian country. This is a pagan country. Real Christianity does not practice wrongdoing. Real committed Christianity does not do that. A committed Christian is one whose life has been changed by God. Not one who bears the label. Well, God bless you. Thank you for your attention. I rest my case. Thank you, Brother Diva. Thank you very much, Bishop Wakefield. Ladies and gentlemen, the final 10 minutes is for Sheikh Ahmad Didat. Mr. Moderator and